VNU is threatening to sue Amano Serafi. And other news that we have today in regards to Nidhi Sanji and other things on this episode. The corporation known as VU, VNU, looks like they are going to be trying to sue their former talent, uh, Amano Serafi, who was part of Solstice. And it says, um, today we would like to make an announcement regarding Solstice Amano Serafi. On February 28, 2024, Serafi informed VNU of her intention to break contract and refusal to continue direct communications. She further expressed that she would proceed with future communication through legal procedure. Serafi's discussion saddened us deeply as we have invested much time and effort to continuously work with her. And what they mean by this is that they spent money. They spent money and they want that money back. If you remember uh, the information that was put out there, it's about $454,000 that they want back. They want back um, any kind of art that was done for her. They want back uh, the, the amount that was done for her VTuber model. They want back the time for their managers, supposedly. You know, they want all these things back from her. And that's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. It, a company, once they invest in you, they can't charge you afterwards for the things they invested in you unless it's a part of the contract. You can have a penalty. Sometimes contracts have penalties that if you leave before the first year, any training, uh, money spent on training, you agree to pay back. It's happened to other people I know. It hasn't happened to me per se. It's happened to other people I know. But that can happen. I'm not sure how legal it is. But I've seen it happen. Let's see. Um, we have not shared the matter publicly until now because we had held off from any formal legal actions that could jeopardize the possibility of working with Serafi again. However, as recent events have been damaging to other talents currently working with VNU, we are obliged to make no choice but to take legal actions accordingly. What they mean by damaging, specifically here, what they mean by damaging is that this stuff got out. All this hidden information, all this... Uh, asking the talent for 400k over 400k all of that got out and they're angry it got out they are embarrassed by it because it makes them look really bad it makes them look money hungry it looks like it makes them look money grubbing it makes them look that like they don't care about the talents it makes them look a really really bad on them and that is what they don't like they don't really care about things that she's done or anything that she has slighted them for what she cares about is the things that like you know legal mindset Rima Evanstar, other people have put out there a uh, false ID because they don't care about things that I've put out there. I'm a tiny VTuber. They don't, I, I'm not, I'm not viewed in the same sphere as any of them. So it, they just hate that they now have a PR disaster on their hands and they're going to have to do something about it. We apologize for any convenience or concern caused to the talents and fans of VNU due to their unexpected event. After this announcement, Seraphie's membership will be closed immediately. Additionally, we, are, we will begin to set the internal procedures for how to refund Super Chats and YouTube memberships that have been made to Seraphie since December 2023. We will provide an update as soon as possible. They went after her in America. They're dead. Uh, so on top of having not paid her for December and January, they're doubling down that by refunding her earned cash and not considering to put it against her insane bill. Hmm. Not to mention that this, per apparent corpo standard, goes against what Seraphie already said. It's a shame what happened to Seraphie. Just found her in December and enjoy the content that I could see. But she's back anyway, so more content to enjoy, however she is with that. And uh, if they go after her in America, they're going to both die legally and PR-wise, take legal action. Their contract is full of illegal stuff. If you really take legal action, your contract will need, will need to be shown in public or at least lots of people in court. Good luck with that. Of course, it's a big good luck with that. It's not going to happen. Like, from here... <clears throat> This is what this is a big little you know thing of that's going on here. Seraphi now going indie with the name Alien Mixture terminated her contract after she and the management had a falling out. She complained that the management never supported, trained, or guided her and other members whatsoever. There was also a lot of other mismanagement behind the scenes. When she wanted to graduate, the management didn't allow her and threatened her that if she wanted to graduate, she would need to pay a 450k plus bill. They also threatened to sue her. Then she said that she knew about the Doki Bird versus Nidhi Sanji thing and decided to follow Doki's footsteps by getting a lawyer. Her lawyer immediately laughed after reviewing the contract and said that the contract was invalid because it was full of illegal stuff and has no legal standing, especially in the USA where the alien mixture lives. So yeah, she's saying this isn't going to work. She herself was like, you guys aren't supporting me. You guys aren't trying to build me up. You guys aren't trying to do anything to make me be better. 
make me grow as an, you know a VTuber, which is what a lot of people want when they're in a part of an organization like that. They want to be able to grow as a VTuber. They want to be able to do things as a VTuber. That's why you get into large organizations like this. You don't get into it just because like, ooh, I like this organization. It's like, no, how are they going to be able to help my craft elevate? And they aren't, they didn't do any of that. They were just trying to rake in the cash that Serafi and others who are part of Solstice were getting in because, you know, of course, they were getting super chats and everything. And now they're trying to take at least one or two months of her pay away by re refunding those super chats, refunding the memberships, which I'm not sure if you can do that on YouTube. Even if it's a month behind, I don't think you can actually do that. I think it has to be within 30 days. I think it's one of those things. So they can't do that. They can try to do that to be vindictive, but I'm not sure. I, I, you guys can correct me, of course. I don't, I don't think that they can do that. Now, who's Alien Mixture? Um, people are mentioning all the stuff about, you know, being supported, trained, etc. But here's Alien Mixture here. This is Seraphie's new channel. She's on Twitch, it appears like, I believe. And she's doing a lot of, yeah, Twitch and YouTube. She has her own channels. And uh, I'm going to open up both so you can get a look at both. She's doing Bioshock right now. Alien Mixture, as of, as of writing this, at least. And Alien Mixture is doing yeah, Bioshock as well. As you can see, she's very healthy. She has very healthy numbers in both of them. I'm going to go back to the YouTube and see her numbers are very healthy here. She's having 56 watching on YouTube, which she's more of a of a, of a uh, Twitch person, it seems like. So she is definitely uh, someone that is doing a little bit better, you know, by herself, it seems like. And here we go with some of the reactions. Some of the reactions are here. Uh, Rima Evanstar, our favorite little horse uh, girl. She has the agency that tried to charge a monoserafy upward of 100k for wanting to leave the agency is now also threatening lawsuit against her, the former talent, for damages. <clears throat> it is very wild. Yes, it is. It's super wild that this is happening. More reactions to this. Why are corporals all so bad at this? This is so easy. I will charge you $10 each to do this for you and become a millionaire in a year and rate this is happening. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. Another person said, don't make the attack from the low ground. Took your sweet ass time with that, huh? It's too effing late. F off. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's too late for this. You owe it to the rest of your talents to learn from this mistake and follow proper laws in their country. Trying to charge nearly half a million dollars for labor costs to terminate a contract goes against labor laws in the U.S. Stop digging the hole deeper. It absolutely goes against labor laws in the U.S. And this is the one that I'm reading here. Go absolutely goes against labor laws in the U.S., it goes against any common sense laws that, that are out there. Any and all common sense laws will have that not a thing. You can't you can't do labor costs. Pretty much the only thing you can do is uh, there are certain things you can do, like certain trainings, uh, certain things like that. Um, like you can do things like if you got them a, uh, a, certi a certification, you can charge them for it if they leave within a month after getting the certification because like you paid for it, that type of thing. I think those things can be done but not this. Next one is charges her 500k for graduation and then tries to paint Seraphi as the bad one. Yeah, bad move. Niji Sanji tweet, 2024 has been a bad year for VTubers. I definitely agree with that. Black company tries to milk money out of one girl who doesn't want to work with them due to a toxic work environment. They also try to bill her for 600 million won for graduating. Yeah, that's just really dumb. It's just, it makes no sense. No matter what side of the, the aisle you're on, it makes no sense overall. When large corporations or larger corporations like VNU want to sue their talents and they want to make their talents pay for all of the costs during the time that they were there, we have another organization here uh, in regards to uh, Idol EN here, Idol overall. Uh, Aviel Basin is the one who leads Idol right now, the CEO. He says, hey, everyone, today I would like you to dive deep into our new revamped expense coverage. Idol was the first VTuber agency to push expense coverage for talents because we believe that VTuber agencies should invest more resources in their talents. As this will be mutually beneficial and will keep them, help them grow and keep them better content. Since then, we have been updating and reshaping the way we reinvest in talents to encourage better and more diverse content, as well as large scale projects. Today, we explore our new expansive coverage system we introduced this year to our talents. This new approach helps talents focus on the content instead of worrying about expenses and promises more group projects and creative thinking. Continuing to company credit cards, all of our talents are issued official company credit cards assigned to them to be used easily and efficiently when purchasing things like video games, equipment, and other things they might need for streaming. This helps talents make quick purchases without having to talk to their managers, making the whole process more efficient. Quarterly budget. 
In order to make things fairer, to promote reinvestment in smaller talents and encourage large-scale projects by talents, we have introduced a quarterly budget for talents. Quarterly budgets are calculated every quarter based on the last quarter's performance. Budget is 1500 or 20% of the quarter's revenue, whichever is higher. This guarantees even smaller talents get significant budget to undertake large-scale projects while still reinvesting a significant portion of earnings back to the talents. There's a generation budget, a budget per generation. Moving into 2024, we will be putting a lot more focus on group projects and teamwork. With that, we decided to introduce generation budget that each generation is provided with in order to encourage large group projects throughout the year. The generation budget is given to each quarter and is equal to 1500 multiplied by the number of talents in a generation. So it's four, it's 6,000, if it's two, it's 3,000, etc. This budget is given on top of the normal quarterly budget for individual projects, and each generation decides how the budget is used each quarter. Donathon coverage. Donathons have been greatly a, a great opportunity for talents to raise money for large scale projects. We decided to integrate that as a part of our expense coverage by covering all project expenses for this different goals so that talents can uh, take home the earnings they made from a donathon without having to worry about paying for the goals they promised to do. As a result, we do not profit at all from donathons because the goals reflect the cost of projects based on the amount raised. Other budgets. As a part of a secret project, talents are also issued an additional budget that is more significant than the budgets listed below. I have to re revisit this post soon in the future to provide more context on that once the project is announced. To summarize, we have been working behind the scenes with the talents to increase our investment in talents and offer a clear expense coverage system for, the, for them as well. This is part of a series of internal changes we've been making to further benefit the talents in our mission to prioritize talent happiness and well-being. This is very good. This is different from even freaking Nidhi Sanji, from even freaking um, other organizations. I think smaller organizations like Face Connect and others do something similar, but uh, none of the large ones do that. And the large ones can actually afford to do something like this, but they don't. Because especially like Niji Sanji, what they want is money, 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 and not anything going out. That's what they want. I'd mentioned a lot of times before that Niji Sanji was dropping. Well, at least a lot of their talents were dropping. I think I used V stats or something like that to show it in the past. But they continue to drop. <clears throat> they continue to be a negative situation for them. Uh, Niji Sanji EN is showing a significant decline in viewership as of March 2024. And this is saying overall the VTuber agencies... You have uh, Hollow Life, which has 12 million. Um, Hollow Life is even seeing a drop. Uh, Vishojo, it looks like, is seeing a drop too. Neboka, aka Virtual Real. Uh, Face Connect. Hollow Life Dev I Device. Nidisanji EN. Nidisanji EN has seen a drop of 65%. 65% drop. Right there at the 942.119. They are number six. They've seen a 65% drop. When Hollow Live English and Hollow Live itself has only seen well, this one down here uh, has seen forty nine percent. So I'm not sure if this is just something indicative of the organization or something indicative of what is going on here, like of uh, you know people just not wanting to be a part of this organization and do things for this organization. I don't know, but we will uh, just take a look at this, see what's going on, and I'm really, really, really super surprised that they have not taken it off. But maybe they're maturing a little bit and they're like well some criticism is good but you know if it's hate then yes remove hate absolutely remove hate i agree with that 100 percent hollow live once again showing how it should be done hollow live once again showing how concerts should actually be done nowadays they're doing right now dreamhack is a big uh festival going on later on this year if i'm not mistaken in melbourne australia april 27th the rod lava arena melbourne park what is this going to be this is going to be one a 3D live. It's going to be one of their, uh, like they did for Hollow Fest. going to be the exact same thing. The same thing they did with Connect the World. The exact same thing here. But here's the big difference. Premium seats. Uh, remember, this is a festival, so this is popular. Premium seats. 58 US dollars. Being in the, in the front rows. Normal seats. Most likely, all of this is already sold out. Uh, you know, once things start popping up, they're going to be sold out. Normal seats. $32. Live streams. $27. 3D concert, and I'm in a box, but I'm still going to talk to you guys. I'm in a box, but I'm still going to talk to you guys. Um, Virtual Rhapsody. I'm going off memory now because I'm in my box. I'm no, no longer in my box, so I don't have to go off memory. Ah, I'm getting smacked. Premium seat, 140 US dollars. Normal seats, 110 US dollars. Live stream, $35. Two acts, as in you have to pay for two days. You have to pay one of those every single day, so 140 bucks every day that you go. Two separate tickets. Male and females are separate. 2D karaoke, 
and basically they're going to be doing 2D karaoke. It's not going to be the big 3D that everyone is like, oh my God about, which is basically what's going to be here. It's going to be one of the 3D lives. 3D in the sense it's like Vocaloid. Like if you've ever gone to a Miku Expo concert or if you've ever gone to any one of those things or seen Hollow Fest or seen any of these things, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. They're going to have a screen where they're going to project the image onto, like a, a clear screen where they project the image onto, and it's more affordable. It's worth it to go there because you're going to have Cali, you're going to have... Uh, you get freaking Rene. You're gonna have Marine, Toa, um, Bay, Ali. You're gonna have big, big numbers there. You're also gonna have some big numbers here. Alira's gonna be there. That's one of the reasons I wouldn't go because Alira's there because she is not acted properly. If she had acted like a proper adult and done things like a proper adult would, I would have nothing against any of them. I don't have anything against them personally. Just I wouldn't do be anywhere that they are around because they've shown that they are not mature. And that's just what I'm saying. On that end. Now let's go down with people saying a glorified karaoke collab stream is more expensive than a proper 3D concert. What an effing joke. Quality over quantity. Exactly. And this is how I find out that Holofest is going to perform in Melbourne. I need to watch the concert live or so help me. Yeah, people are going quite crazy for this. Like, huge difference. I don't see Niji ever beating Hollow in idle stage performance. Is Virtual Rhapsody an independent thing or is it attached to an adjacent con or event? And does this price of the Virtual Rhapsody include said event? Because the DreamHack 3 day pass is 75 bucks, Hollow Concert Premium upgrade is $89. So in total, 164 or 108 to 109 USD. Yes, you can even go lower if you just get the one day pass in the standard spot for the concert, just 94, 62 US dollars. And DreamHack is in Melbourne, so it's a main city. I have lived there for more than five years while it was often listed as one of the most livable cities in the world. Services and venues are definitely not cheap. Singapore ain't beating us when it comes to such costs. So they're going in a high cost of living space. They're going in a, in a event, a big event that is well known among the high cost of living space people. And they're making it cheap. They're making it affordable because they want to bring in fans. They want fans who are a part of them to actually enjoy the time that they're there with them. That makes perfect sense when you think about it. Like, I'm like, that makes it makes perfect sense. And I wish anybody that is there to be able to enjoy yourselves, enjoy, have fun, take pictures and post them on Twitter. I would love that. Go over everything involved in this one, because from what I have read and what I have seen, this is all, of course, hearsay. It's involving Reimu, and uh, it's involving so her past life. It's also involving someone that they were partners with in their past life, and someone that they were together with, and did the person that they were together with did some things that um, don't uh, don't jive with most people. Like for example, it says trigger warning, grooming, uh, that stuff, uh, advanced sexual advances towards minors, and toxicity in uh the like as a, a couple so down here there you know people are saying you know when i learned the age i felt quite upset made my close friends and human person aware what they're saying here is that this is not against reimu 100 i have to mention this right now this is not against reimu this isn't reimu herself doing these things this isn't reimu herself actually doing these nasty things that is trigger warning up here it is just saying that Reimu was with a person who did this, either best friends, close friends, relationships, whatever it was with this person. And they, according to the, the uh, accusations, again, all accusations, all based on hearsay, all based on this type of stuff. So take it with a grain of salt. But these are accusations that she did nothing knowing what was going on and um, that there was no speaking out about it until the things came out. Then she spoke out about it. And yes, she disavowed all of it. She did, She was like, this should never have happened. This person should have never done that. I, I told the person, I don't want to be involved with you after this. I don't want to have anything to do with you after this. So she did the right thing. This is like, but this is people trying to go after somebody. And this is kind of also trying to be a smear. The reason why I want to actually mention it. And the reason why I want to actually speak about it is because smears like this are not good. They're not good in the community. They should be called out. They should be mentioned because if you have something against someone and don't like someone, that's that's your prerogative. If you know something specific and you have proof, that is your prerogative to spit it out. But if the person wasn't directly involved and they had nothing to do with the grooming or whatever was going on, then you should not be spreading these type of things, in my opinion. It was disappeared from the Nijisani subreddit. This person says, from my understanding of the actual post, I believe the post description is something wrong. It claims that Rainbow had a boyfriend pre-Niji. 
In the actual post, Reimu clarifies this was a close friend of hers who had a relationship with Hibiya, the person who made the initial claim of underage stuff, while Hibiya was underage. Reimu has cut off contact with this person, and the screenshots are attached to the tweet put out by Reimu's PL. If I remember correctly, the account is private, and most likely those posts in Spanish, so I don't know what those screenshots entail. Edit. Original Twitter post from late 2022, so it's an old Twitter post, has been known in the Spanish community for a while, it seems. And, um, yeah, people were saying about the boyfriend and backtracking and all that kind of stuff. A TLDR of a TLDR. Kind of a nothing burger. Mentions Reimu exactly once, and doesn't even claim Reimu engaged in harassment. Only that she kept mentioning him as a community figure who drew harassment to him. Original poster was groomed by an unrelated third party Reimu was friends with at the time and claims Reimu kept mentioning him on Twitter, which caused him to get harassed. The wall of red text is Reimu's response, claiming she was completely disconnected from the incident and did not consider the groomer a friend, only a business partner, and cut ties with him when she felt the allegations were true. She says she doesn't remember if she addressed the victim at all, but apologizes if she did anything that she could have constructed as harassment. The link to a translated version of the original document for anyone who wants to go to their own conclusions. So yes, from what people are saying, Reimu was not involved directly with it, but was in the sphere of someone involved in it, was a friend of someone involved in it, was a hang around or whatever you want to call it of someone involved in it, and they were not doing enough. Like, the claims are that, that Reimu didn't do enough, but let me just be objective here, and let me just let you know my opinion. Yes, grooming, the PDF thing, all that kind of stuff, horrible. They should be buried underneath the jail for doing that kind of stuff. I understand that. But here's the thing. Those are very, very, very serious accusations, which they always should be. They always should be super serious. They should always be taken very seriously, which is why the community takes them very seriously. I take those very seriously, so the person who did it is bad. But also, sometimes you have friends who you think are great, who aren't great at the end, and can hurt you in a very bad way. And that is something that I have realized, I have seen in person, and um, I have had to get rid of relationships, friendships, etc. Because people have been toxic to others, and I don't want to be seen as someone condoning that. And that's what Reimu apparently did. She got rid of that person. She's like, I don't want to, our friendship to continue anymore. I don't want to know about you anymore. I don't want to be involved with this anymore because I don't like what you did, which is the right way to be, honestly. It's the right way to be, and I applaud her for it. So I'm not, this is not an anti Reimu thing. This is basically understand the situation if you see this popping up again. A story that I covered a while back is uh, about Copia merch and the fact that some people were scammed. I think it was like Shy Lily, so a bunch of other people that were, I think it was Bao actually, and other people that were scammed about the Copia merch situation. Now Amelie is another one that has been scammed about Copia merch. Again, merch update addressing concerns March 7th, 2024. Over the last month, many of you have seen statements from content creators who are owed tens of thousands of dollars from a former merchandise company, Copia merch. I am heartbroken to share. I've also been impacted by their mismanagement. When I closed my merch shop in December, I was owed nearly $60,000. 60k in past revenue by Copia Merch. After taking ownership of $36,000 of unsold merchandise from the company, I am currently owed $22,000. The staggering loss and the order delays and difficulties you guys have expressed to me left me no choice but to sever all business ties with Copia Merch. In the months since, I have worked with Vite Ramen, which is he's the goat. Vite Ramen is the goat in this whole one. To fulfill your outstanding orders, many of you will have already received your delayed merch before reading the statement. So if you're still waiting in order, please email Vita Raman and include your order number, name, and brief explanation of your issue. Behind the scenes, this entire process has been a huge strain on my mental health. It's been challenging to stream like nothing's wrong while this unraveled in the background. I had 3.0 merch ready to go for Siren Monarch's debut that I was never able to launch. And I struggle with feeling like I've let my fans down. And that's the worst part. They all feel like they've let their fans down. That's the worst part of this whole situation. Like, it's not their fault but they felt like it was their fault, you know? Um, and the incredible community down. In spite of everything, I'm excited to move ahead with a new, stronger merchandise partner, and I can't wait to share my new merch with you all in the future, knowing it will be delivered in a timely and smooth way you guys deserve. I sincerely apologize for the delays experience, and I thank you endlessly for your patience and support. Seems like there were multiple people not getting any money from the merch sold, plus many people who did not receive their merch. Absolute scumbag behavior from Copia Merch. Initially, I would have accepted that it was mismanagement if it was just one person because sometimes this happens. 
but there have been multiple people who've gotten effed uh, over them by, the, by them. If they want to improve and not have this happen again, they need to do a lot of restructuring. Otherwise, they should work again. Other people who have been effed is Bao, Shoto, and Sanagi Yuzu. I hope it gets sorted out as quickly as possible. People can have can get the merch they paid for, and others can know the situation so they know never to make deals with Copia merch. I know I won't. And of course, if any of you are affected by this, each one of these, Bao the Whale, Shoto, Sanagi, and Monarch recently, they're all willing to work with you. So go and, you know, uh, act, you know look at Vite Ramen and everything. Go take a look at them and go see how everything is and uh, see if you can get your stuff. Daily reminder, at least a reminder in this video, of K9 Kudo being able to get his award. And he named it as K9 Kudo. He's finally going to be able to touch it. Same thing with Matara Khan when she gets hers. And same thing with Doki Bird when she got hers. She's finally able to touch it. Finally, you don't have a company telling you no, 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 because that is our stuff, not your stuff. It is earned by the company, not earned by the individual, which is the way that Nidhi Sanji seems to see it. Because otherwise, they could easily have just given it to each talent and then been like, we would appreciate it if, you know, you would want to hang it up here if you can, if you want to. But no, you can keep it at home if you want. And of course, recently in one of the videos, I did mention that uh, we also have uh, Fuamoko who got theirs as well. And not only did they get theirs, they got two of them. Cover paid for two. Hollow Live paid for two when they could have just been paying for one. They paid for two of them because there's Fuawa and Mokoko. So they paid for both. They get to keep it. It's in their house instead of what Nidhi Sanji does. And here as well, it's going to be in his house. I'm very happy for that happening. I'm very, very glad that this happened. He deserves it. So does everyone else. They deserve it. I ha I don't want animosity in the VTubing sphere. I want it to be a community. I want the VTubing sphere to be a community and us to be happy when people are having good successes like this. I'm happy for him. Big time. We had been talking about recently uh, in the past couple of episodes of my VTuber news uh, about the... Claude and people just, you know, they're supposedly supposed to ask for their play buttons, but uh, you're not supposed to, this this is a bad way of being in a company. This is like Stockholm Syndrome type of situation uh, in Nidhi Sanji, but Hololive is like, we didn't even have to ask either. Like they just said it. We didn't even have to ask for the play buttons. They immediately sent it to them because here's the thing. Fuamoko is one. It's one entity. It's Fuamoko, but it has Fua, Fuawa and Mokoko. So there are two VTubers, but they're one entity when it comes to the YouTube channel. YouTube channel sees it as one entity. So what they did here is that they gave each one of them a play button. Hololive spent extra money because you could, you get your first one free. And after that, you have to pay for it. So Hololive went out of their way to pay extra money, which I think is like 200 bucks for the for an, uh, an extra one. Like 253, I think Doki Bird said like 250 something bucks. They paid for an extra one. And if I'm not mistaken, they even made it specific for Fuawa and Mokoko. So it, they each got their plaques. Two people got play buttons. Even though technically it's one channel, two people got play buttons. This is the way it's supposed to be. Like, how hard is it for you just to spend the extra money, like Niji Sanji, spend the extra money, or just give them the first play button that you get? And then if you want one on the wall, you pay for it yourself. It's, it's, I, I, it's just, it astounds me. It still does. I still find it crazy. And I still find it wild how, how Niji Sanji can't get this, but Hololive can. And let's read what some people are saying. I said it in the previous thread before, uh, the Niji Sanji, Niji Sanji subreddit mods took it down. But if they could have just asked, then how come the others who reached that milestone never asked in the first place? Or better yet, what Claude said is true. Then why didn't they just prove it to be true by asking for it? I don't believe that the many Niji Livers that reached over 100k were given the option to ask for the play button. If somehow none of them even kept it. Claude's entire statement just screams massive copium on his part. And I agree with this statement. It's massive copium. And yes, you're hearing stuff in the background because people keep doing stuff. The related clip about Fuamoko is right here. Let's watch the Fuamoko clip. Let's watch it right here. Because I, I want to see this. I want to see what they did. Fuamoko. They did, no, they just did a Fuamoko. The other day, you might know from Twitter. Oh, that good happened. Yeah, something very good happened. Yeah. Happen. It, it arrived. It arrived. A present from YouTube. They both got one. They both got one. <laughs> So this is the thing. Hollow Live and Cover paid for both. They get the first one free because it automatically gets sent to you. It's free. The second one, I mean, you just have to pay shipping. But the second one is like 250 bucks, and they paid for it. Oh, <laughs> right. Thank you right. so much. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Try to take a photo with 
felt a reflection of light. Yeah, it still had the reflections in there. But, you know, there's so things that I support for all of I sent my card break to and to be able to call whole life at home now. Yeah! Thank you! Thank you! That is amazing. I love that. We don't even have to share. Don't have to share. Didn't even have to ask either. That's a big hit. They didn't even have to ask either. Thank you so much, everybody. It's kind of funny we're taking a photo with a photo. It's a photo with a photo. Yeah. That means there's two of them and two more kojang. That's all gonna be complicated. Well, well then, and we're gonna continue to work really hard. And hopefully one day we can receive our golden play yeah. buttons too. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. In the background, sometimes you can hear you can hear <laughs> the Niji Sanji sisters. The Niji sisters trying to break down my door. The Niji sisters are trying to break down my door. That's what's happening here. You 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 see that, right? You see that. The needy, needy sisters are trying to break down my door. They're trying to get in here, and they're trying. They're, they're making it really loud for you guys because that's what they want. They want you guys to be scared. They want you guys to just you know try see them try to break down my door. And that is all I have for you today. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Take a look at my socials as well, and anything that pops up on your screen. I do hope you have a wonderful evening, night, morning, whichever one it is for you guys. Appreciate you always watching. Thank you so much. Of course, like and subscribe if you enjoy this. Bye-bye.